Hello video fans, this is Eitan from TV Connect 2017 in London. I'm going to do a quick wrap up of the event, uh, some of the highlights of the shows, and we'll start with the first topic, linear versus VOD. So a few years back, VOD was the main theme. Everyone thought that VOD is going to be the main key driver for online video consumption across the board. Definitely VOD is very, very important, and we see the likes of SVOD subscription, which is the most uh, compelling content and the most uh, uh, growing content in terms of OTT consumptions uh, around the world. And then the linear channels have start, started to, uh, to arrive and it was very, very important to introduce also linear channels uh, out of these uh, OTT packages because it's more comfortable to watch linear channels based on some genre uh, and some uh, uh, flavors of contents that people would like to see. What we see today, because of the huge reduction of cost of cloud resources and cloud computing, is th that the major broadcasters are experimenting with linear channels across the different platforms. So they are launching uh, quick channels across various uh, geographies, testing. These channels could be um, around specific topic, about, around specific character, and they want to check if they can monetize these channels across different, uh, different territories, time of the day, uh, and, spe and special events. Uh, the issue of live and real-time content has become really, really important. We see many, many companies specializing in, co in that specific area. Sports, by the way, is very, very uh, compelling, obviously, uh, with the introduction of uh, 4K video, virtual, virtual reality, and HDR. I saw many, many companies specializing in the live uh, uh, um, events delivery across all the platform, and they are there to introduce more and more feature sets, which are very, very nice and important. Uh, the concept of pop-up channels, they can quickly be introduced and uh, removed you know, within a few hours is something that we're going to see more and more. And this is a, a new concept that is being led by Disney, uh, for example, that they share this here in this, uh, in this event. Next subject, uh, virtual reality and 360. So what's this thing all about, right? So many, many discussions around virtual reality. Uh, it uh, sounds like previously, you know, a few years back, there was a lot of uh, hype around 3D. Uh, now there is a lot of hype around virtual reality. But I think this case is a little bit different because we can see various actual valid use cases for virtual reality. And do the service provider can really monetize the issue of virtual reality? This was one of the major topics of, uh, of the event. What we feel is that it's all about the content itself. Uh, as opposed to 3D, virtual reality has a lot of use cases. Uh, by the way, some of them can be consumer use cases, some of them can be uh, enterprise-led or educational or health, but it's all about the content. So yeah, the service pro providers or their content providers will be able to uh, perfectly fit the content type with a virtual reality or augmented reality experience. We do believe that this is going to be a, a, a valid technology that is going to stay with that for the years uh, for the years to come. The third sub subject, which is the OTT workflow. Um, so many companies around the OTT arena, uh, we've been seeing this for many, many years right now. Uh, but uh, I think there is a nice shift in the market that uh, the OTT is, uh, although it's such a big system, it, uh, uh, there is a trend now to talk about small microservices uh, for the OTT. For example, login and authentication, content management, subscriber management. So it is very, very important for the OTT companies to develop that flexibility, to have a, a, a microservices around one specific topic uh, with the embedded software infrastructure, virtual environments, and a set of APIs that are very, very open and easily, easy can be integrated to any customer uh, uh, management platform or content management uh, system. Uh, next object is IP video. Yes, this topic is back. Um, 
Seven years ago, it was a big uh, question whether IP will be used for video. Nevertheless, today, it is very, very uh, obvious that IP is being used for video. And the topic of this event is let's make IP video even better than broadcast video, which is a very nice uh, uh, description of what's happening with video. And it's mainly because of the use of the cloud. The cloud resources and the cost of processing huge amount of data in the cloud has been reduced substantially, which enables a lot of uh, video uh, processes, which require a huge amount of uh, CPU power, storage, and, and, and band bit rates and processing power to be processed at the, at the cloud. Uh, this enables the introduction of new services, the reduction of prices across the board in introducing new channels, introducing new services, and this is a trend that we're going to see more and more. We do, I do believe that the prices are will continue to go down, uh, which will enable us to provide more advanced visa services to consumers, um, serving the appetite for the consumers to, uh, to see what more and more video across any device at a much higher quality. Um, next subject is machine learning and artificial intelligence. So every company in the event has some kind of a machine learning and artificial intelligence, intelligence technology, right? So I'm not sure everyone understands what this whole thing is all about. So we see machine learning technologies around content delivery networks, around advertisement uh, personalizations, around analytics, around management of the content delivery platform. So many, many companies talk about uh, machine learning. It's like a hype right now uh, to talk about about machine learning, but I think it's very, very important to go into the depth of things and really to understand what are the technolog technologies that are behind that and what they really uh, companies are trying to achieve. Uh, another important topic is kill the buffer, right? So this is a worldwide effort, right? So running video streaming on a non-managed public internet networks is a huge challenge. Uh, there are many companies that are trying to resolve that issue, whether from the network platform itself, introducing a variety of media delivery platforms that are, some of them are based on the real standard, like delivering HLS streams or MPEG dash streams based on adaptive bitrate. And some of them have actually reinvented the whole delivery um, uh, ecosystem by using proprietary technologies around uh, uh, video streaming. So it's uh, like everything in our market, you know, uh, we have the standardization bodies that are actually uh, going to share the majority of the market, uh, obviously, in terms of standard and protocols. Uh, and some niche market will probably use some um, uh, proprietary technologies or uh, uh, niche technologies like P2P or special video compression techniques, etc., etc. Um, what we see also is uh, the introduction of not just the delivery platform itself, but also an, a lot of add-on uh, applications on top of the delivery platform. These add-ons are actually aggregating real-time data. They can be actually implemented on the client side or on the net server side, and they can integrate and actually a lot of data in real time and make very small decisions about routing traffic from various resources, CDNs, and, and delivery platforms. So plenty of room to grow on this uh, specific topic. Uh, there will be uh, a lot of effort around this domain and uh, throughout this, this uh, uh, throughout the future, many, many years to come, we're going to see a lot of efforts uh, um, around uh, the improvement of the video delivery itself, improvement of the quality of experience to end users, reduction of click to play time, click to play time to end users. Uh, and this effort is still on the go. It will take a few years for it to, to achieve maturity. Um, so another important topic is uh, real-time measurements and data, uh, especially around performance analytics. But what we saw lately, you know, we have be, we've been experiencing this uh, this uh, topic for the last five years at least, is that. Uh, initially, operators and content providers launched their OTT platform. It was very important to go to the market on any screen, but now they want to make this better, improve the content and the personalization and the recommendation engine that they deliver content to their consumers. And it's all around real-time data uh, measurements and analytics. So definitely, we see a lot of companies doing performance analytics. These are the issues that relate to the network traffic, bitrate, traffic, uh, concurrencies, uh, geographies, uh, delivery formats across the different regions. But now we see the trend to more marketing analytics, which will actually be able to provide the content providers and the operators 
uh, a real uh, uh, view about various consum consumption demands uh, of video within their own uh, user and customer base. Uh, the marketing analytics uh, or the performance analytics actually enables companies to uh, do a variety of profiles within the market, actually segment the audience across different genre, ages, geographies, and actually retargeting those customers by form of uh, push notifications or newsletters, actually suggesting them a more uh, personalized content, actually en enable them to retain their customers, increase our pool, and actually uh, provide more uh, more of a value uh, to, to their consumers. Uh, so one last topic, I think uh, for, for my from my perspective is that I feel that the industry is getting uh, more mature. Okay, I call it the uh, the hype fatigue. So uh, many new topics have been uh, examined really, really thoroughly before uh, dropping them to the market with a huge marketing effort and without real understanding or validation of uh, success of these uh, of these items. Uh, throughout the years, uh, we see a variety of hyped video-related subjects that are gone, right? That uh, actually did not really mature and, uh, and uh, productized across the board. But now, uh, every new concept, every new feature, or every new idea with video has been highly validated and tested before taking this uh, real, uh, in real time to the market. So this is my quick uh, wrap-up. Thank you for listening. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Uh, give me more and more feedback about the topics you want me to cover. And uh, see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Connect 2017. See you in our next video blog. Bye bye.